Alright guys, welcome to this tutorial. I am Loïc Coutier, Supervising Sound Designer at PlayStation Europe. And uh, today I wanted to talk about how we made the tunnel layer of the ships in Wipeout using Massive. So I'm just going to start with a empty patch. So a new sound. Classic Sotus. Right, and uh, yeah, let's start. The first thing I wanted to do is to make sure that what I was going to design in Reaper was going to sound exactly the same in the game. And uh, so to do this, I, I had to think about what would be the parameter from the game that I would use to drive the pitch, to drive the pitch of the engine, the power of the engine. And uh, at the beginning, I thought it was going to be the thrust of the engine, but actually in Wipeout, you're all the time on the accelerator. So the throttle is always at maximum. So the modulation is always, uh, is almost zero. It never modulates almost. Uh, so I used the velocity instead and it worked. So we're going to consider that my mod wheel here currently assigned to the vibrato, uh, is going to be, uh, the, the engine RPM, for example, to make an analogy with a, a car engine. So I want to keep the vibrato here. So I'm just going to swap like that and here let's call that rpm this is going to be the power of my engine so now if i play my sound of course i need to assign it to pitch let's say something like an octave for now okay so now that's working so basically that's that's the very first point to try to have this pitch modulation and from now it's really designed the sound to make this very cool cool uh, so next step is uh, trying to find the right pitch range and pitch start for an engine so let's start with the pitch range so first actually so back to my early experiments with the virus ti i realized by a range really close to an octave is what is really good to give this sort of vibe to an engine. So like I'm already I'm uh, on 11. So yeah, something something really close to that. It doesn't really matter too much. You don't have to be on like exact semitones. Again, this is sound effects. Uh, so you don't need to worry about uh, this. Just do it by ear. So one thing to know also is that I wanted to preserve uh, and headroom to want to have some headroom in the in the pitch range so you would actually actually be at almost max speed around there 70 percent if you can see it here 70 percent would be the max speed and after that it would be when you start playing in the zone mode and be extremely fast you would get there but most of the time you would be 80 percent something like this so it sounds like that So yeah, you would never really reach and be stuck at the maximum because this sounds really dead. So anyway, uh, now what I need, I'm playing the D note. Uh, now what I need is to have like a sort of starting point for the pitch. So I'm just gonna lower. Okay, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a happy with this for the lowest part of the of the engine. Cool. Okay, so now I have the pitch range and pitch start. Uh, I'm gonna move on to trying to find uh, the right sound for the oscillator. So what I wanted is to have a very visceral sound uh, to create that sort of Formula One, futuristic Formula One engine. And uh, so, of course, you're going to have to play with uh, those parameters like the oscillator type. Uh, let's just keep this one because it's a good starting point. And then here, you, what is very important here is to play with the mode as well. This changes completely the results you get from uh, modulating pitch. So this is very interesting results and there are no rules here so i'm not going to say oh you should try to have this mode or this mode this this would be completely uh, bullshit to be honest it's like you have here 
with just those parameters here, you have like millions of possibilities, honestly. And uh, all of them can uh, make you go to excellent, really cool sounds, but also complete mayhem as well, complete chaos, noise. So it's, it's really down to your ears. Uh, I don't have rules other than experiment and the big skill you need to have is being able to recognize when something sounds really nice. That's the thing, because you're going to be browsing through billions of possibilities and the skill here is really to know, oh yeah, this is cool. And you stick to that and you stop browsing from that point. That's the thing. Uh, so let's have just something that is not too rich as the first oscillator. That seems good to me, something like this. Uh, maximum volume doesn't really matter at this point. Good, happy with that. Uh, cool, so now what I want is to use the filter as well. So for the filter, even before starting, and also because I tried it in the on the various TI, I really wanted to try uh, the comb filter because of its complexity, the comb filter, uh, is making a sound feel a bit to try to put it inside a sort of space that could exist because of all those features you have. It's very similar to uh, an impulse response or um, a realistic space. And I know like if I want my engine sound to exist within an engine, this, this could help me. Uh, I wasn't sure, but I, di I did use it and I really loved it. Uh, so yeah, let's get rid of filter 2 um, for now at least and what I did with the comb filter is trying to find the sort of sweet spot where the pitch parameter of the comb filter and the pitch of my engine would resonate. You can hear this stuff, so okay, let me give you more spectrum. You see how dead it sounds like that, and then when you add the comb filter, sounds very cool, right? Cool. So now it's about really trying to tune the stuff to get something cool. So I'm going to use the mod wheel to get very precise uh, changes on massive. So, and then I really want my sound to be always dynamic in the game, so I'm going to still use the RPM uh, value and modulate the pitch here a little bit. So let's increase that value a little bit and listen to that. Okay, sounds to sound closer to an engine. Before that, it was a bit like a like a monk. So okay, I like that. It's pretty cool. Um, so now let's add another oscillator to make this sound a little bit richer, right? So oscillator two. I'm going to try to do something different, so more of a digital sound. So I know I like uh, the guitar pulse, it's pretty cool. And here, I'm going to try to be on the first note, on the same note here, so minus 14. Uh, well, I know I'm going to use three oscillators. I'm going to have the pitch everywhere. Uh, cool. Good, and I'm gonna give it something similar in terms of value as well. Um, something like around 11. Not the exact same value because I want some sort of fatness due to the slight offset of pitch between the two. Okay, so let me just play with the parameters now. Cool. Let's try this. Oh, 
Okay, so something really cool is happening here, and then I recognize that this is important. And uh, so it's just, again, I said, like, swing, changing to formant, for example, or to some of them, other ones, would completely change the sound uh, we have in the end. So I like the formant one, and again, I want this to be dynamic following my RPM increments. So I'm going to assign this to the intensity and give it more as I increase the pitch. Cool, so you can recognize this sort of uh, extra, extra turbo thing that we've just added. Cool, and this is this is cool. I like that. So let's let's keep moving with this one. Um, so uh, now I feel like we have some sort of like super easy, super simple. Uh, I'm not happy with what we have right now as an end result, obviously. But as a base, it's pretty good already. And then now we should start to think about uh, making it feel more complex. Yeah, there's something cool. Okay, so more complex. So the first thing I can think of to make a sound more complex is to add some effects first. So phaser, again, for an engine, a phaser is gonna give it this sort of evolving, uh, evolving spectrum, something really interesting for an engine sound. The point really is to be never static, never dead. So let's use the phaser. Where is it, phaser? Okay. Let's try to play with it a little bit. So of course, yeah, I'm playing with just the same note all the time and playing with the module value to simulate my engine in the game, modulated as the player is playing. Because if I stay like this, it's very boring, right? And the engine would never be stuck like that in the game. So I'm always trying to simulate this sort of race. I could also automate it if I wanted to, but I much rather prefer to control it myself. Uh, so yeah, I left it modulate to simulate that sort of race. So I don't want to go too far with the dry red settings. So you see, it's uh, pretty efficient to make it more alive and it also changes like the spectrum response of it so it's pretty interesting cool i am always experimenting with all the settings to see okay what what is interesting here what becomes cool when i play with it uh, so okay phaser is good uh, let's try to have a look here so again we're trying to complexify the sound to make it uh a bit more realistic, a bit less cheap, basically. And in reality, things are always super complex. You have a lot, a lot of elements in one engine that will be interacting with each other. So we try to recreate this complexity you have in reality, because what we have is in the synthesizer on the basic patch is so simple that it cannot sound any convincing at all. So let's try to make it complex. Uh, first, uh, yeah, we can play with the vibrato actually to make it uh, to add some warmth by uh, slightly offsetting the oscillators. So you can see this sort of uh, so that adds some warmth. So I'm going to play with that, add a little bit, and then actually I'm going to use the RPM value to give more as I go faster. I would have more of that. I think that's pretty interesting. So it sounds a bit funny now. Let's just turn it down. Yeah, too too fast sounds funny. You need to find the right, the sort of sweet spot. Okay, good. Um, now, what I want to try is go to the voicing and we're going to add some voices, right? This is an easy way to populate the soundscape. Small sources. Let's go like a setting of four. 
So just instantly there is more people and to make sure those uh, those extra entities we've added in the soundscape are all a little bit different to have less phasing going on. Just again, closer to reality. In reality, when you copy something, it's not the exact, exact copy. So let's try to reproduce this by having some sort of... Um, it needs to be really subtle. It doesn't need to be crazy because it just creates a wall of sound with sounds of different pitches. Yeah, wavetable position as well. Cool and pan position. So if you want it massive, you can do that. But uh, we will. I will play with this in game. The positioning. I just want it to be. Uh, slightly wide. Make sure that all those voices are not playing uh, full mono. Okay. Okay, now uh, again, still in an attempt to make it sound uh, more realistic, cooler. I'm going to play with noise now. Uh, so noise is an excellent tool to create that sort of jet engine feel by adding some more noisy content. Uh, here, if I have noise... Okay, that sounds a bit weird. I know one of my favorites for sound effect stuff is uh, the metallic one, so let's have a listen. We have that sort of jet engine. So of course it sounds a bit cheap because like we're just pitching a sample, uh, so it's not absolutely amazing. Let me try the high metallic. Actually a much prefer that because it would, in the mix with the other layers, it's going to work much better. So I just want to add uh, this extra layer to make uh, the spectrum a bit more full and has something more noisy. Again, this in reality, you would, you would have this sort of uh, noise signature. So let's add that and still, again, we're going to add modulation so that we feel that increase so you can start a very, very quiet and then get more noise. Not too much. Not too much because otherwise it becomes like so obvious it's not part of the other sounds. So play with the color as well. So I start quite low and then I will increase. Yeah, it's good if I if I solo it. It's super basic honestly. But it adds content that we need. That's air, almost, to that sound. Right, cool, so now uh, what can we do? I would like to add a third oscillator. Uh, still, so this oscillator, I want it to be slightly different uh, in pitch, probably. So I'm going to still go for a digital, uh, digital thing. Let's go Flanders. Um, so I need to find the right pitch first, and I will start with the same minus 14 and give it some pitch modulation. Again, it sounds a bit cheap. It's okay, don't need to. Okay, let me try the format. Yeah, that's pretty close to what I want. It's like an, this sort of extra turbo 
part of the engine. Okay, so it does the job, now I need to find the right pitch. Okay, cool. Uh, that makes it much richer. I like that. And I'm gonna actually only have this guy uh, added when we go fast. So something like this. And then play with the intensity a little bit as well. So I don't know. Yeah, something like that is good. Cool. And now, um, right, there's something I've not added yet, which is very important actually, is distortion. Okay, so in Massive, I like to add distortion at this level, insert one. And so what I'm going to do is go and use the hard clipper. Let's not go crazy, it's not necessary. If you go crazy, then, uh, I mean, I'm planning on using distortion in the game after that. So I don't need to like completely destroy the sound here. adds richness, it adds harmonics, um, so the sound is again fuller, more complex, interactions between sounds are more interesting to listen to. So yeah, I like this level of complexity. Let's uh, keep going with the complexity levels by adding some uh, flanger maybe, maybe just another phaser. So what I could do is to have a phaser that is only really present when you go fast again, so something like that. Again, I always try to give like more speed uh, to the overall elements of this engine sound to, to give it uh, overall that feel of oh everything everything is different but everything is moving faster so it gives you that feel of uh, everything is connected in that sound even if they are all uh, a little bit different and not really acting the same way they are all connected and doing uh, following the same um, main movement. So that's what makes like complexity that is closer to reality. To me, that's my perception of it. Cool, now let's add a little bit of EQ here to make it a bit bigger. Very simple, like honestly, more highs, more lows. Cool, yeah, I'm quite happy with this. Uh, let me see what I could add. If I have a look here, I'm happy with that. Voicing, yeah, it's good. Uh, let me see if I play with more. Thank you. 
Okay, so I have something pretty, pretty heavy, pretty cool. Um, so that's, I mean, that's basically it. the principle. The principle is there. So you can also do some sort of uh, post processing to make it cool. So I have the post processing I did uh, for for one of uh, of those ship sounds. So I've added like filter freak dimension and the limiter. I try to add the dimension expander to just give it a little bit more space. So to be honest, I actually do this in the game. Uh, to give this sort of short delay that would give it more space and just to make it exist somewhere. It needs to exist somewhere. And the limiter is just going to be there too. Make it slightly louder. Yeah, cool. Uh, so, what? What is key here really to remember is like the interactions between all the oscillators. Uh, any parameter here is going to change the sound completely. See, Formand is adding this sort of extra harmonic there, it's very cool. Alright, and uh, also the comb filter. I mean, this is the one I've been using on the first preset I did. We have other presets where I was using other filters, but the comb filter is so crazy. This is... it's, it's now completely different uh, without. And the tuning of this parameter is so important as well. I'm going to try to get a different sound. distortion going on. I'm gonna bypass the post processing plugins. Because this damping makes it a bit more crazy, I'm gonna do the same modulation thing where I have more happening when I go faster. Cool. Cool, I'm gonna do a little bit the same with the feedback. Sounds pretty mental. <laughs> All right, guys, that's the end of the tutorial. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And uh, I wanted to add that uh, there is this big tremolo in the game that you can hear on the engine, and that is done in WISE, in the game engine. Um, and it's a big part of the sound of the engines. The rate of the tremolo is linked to the acceleration values. I just wanted to add this extra detail. All right, bye-bye.